Yes and no are both equally challenging. And how you deliver those yeses, how you deliver those nos will determine the types of relationships you have both professionally and personally. Hi, my name is Devin. Today I own several multi-million dollar companies. We started with $5,000 in a credit card. I don't know the easy way, I only know the hard way. Hey everyone, welcome to the Whiteboard Entrepreneur Podcast where I give straightforward advice to fuel the entrepreneur in all of us. I'm Devin Dickinson. Today I want to talk to you about how to be able to say no. Um, and this is very difficult, I think, for a lot of people. And, it, and it, it's also, you know, it doesn't nat- naturally come easy to me either. Um, and I had to kind of learn how to do this. And I think as a leader, um, you know, people swing one way or the other uh, when it comes to the word no. I think there's a lot of people that as a leader, they think that they're like, I'm the leader. I'm going to go around. I'm going to be this fascist tyrant and I'm going to tell everyone no, and they're going to respect my authority. And then you have other folks that are, you know, of the vein where they're like, they want everyone, I want everyone to like me. And I want people to, you know, under, I want people to uh, follow me because they like me and, and all of these different things. And, and really at the end of the day, a great leader has to make decisions and some decisions are yes. And some decisions are no. Um, but in my opinion, to be a great leader, you need to be able to have the people around you have the uh, confidence and, and and trust you enough to be able to bring ideas to you so that you do have interaction and can be very collaborative. But if all that you're ever doing is say no, 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 people will ultimately start to pull back and stop bringing you ideas. So as it puts you kind of in an awkward spot where on the one hand, you want to be empathetic. On the other hand, you have to make pretty tough decisions. And sometimes, you know, probably more often than not, that answer can be clearly no. And so how do you say that? How do you, how do you communicate that effectively to people that, that you want to bring, continue to bring ideas and, and to be able to have open communication? Well, let's think about first off and foremost, kind of an example of this. And so I always think of my mom when I was in high school and my mom would say no. And I'd be like, why are you saying no? Like, this is absolutely logical that I should be able to go to my friend's house on Saturday night, why would you be saying no? And she'd say, well, I've told you yes too many times and you you need to get comfortable hearing the word no. <laughs> and I was like, that doesn't seem fair, but I bet there's some truth to that. And, and I think about that all the time. I'm like, you know, we, in our lives, we have to be able to be comfortable saying no. We have to be able to be comfortable receiving the word no. Um, and so I, I think back to that example um, and I'm like, how do, you know, how does that relate to me today, right? People bring stuff to me almost every day because I do feel like most of our organizations are very collaborative and I want to hear them. I want to hear these ideas but I also have to be very discerning, right? Um, and sometimes there's things where people bring you ideas that are like, hey, you know, we have to evaluate that idea and decide yes or no. Sometimes you're going to have uh, people bring um, things that they want or desire, right? Like uh, could perhaps be a raise or I need to take two weeks off or, hey, um, you know, I'd love to be able to work from home. And sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes the answer is no. And how do you say that? Or you have a customer that's like, hey, I want to change our payment terms or, hey, we want to modify the our order or we want to modify our contract, all of these different things. And you want to be able to hear people, but you also want to be able to give the right or wrong or decide whether the answers should be yes or answers should be no. And if the answer is no, how do you say that without destroying the relationship? And that's the big question. How do you say no without destroying a relationship? Well, what I personally believe is first and foremost, listen. Let the person present their idea. Let the person present why they think they should get a raise. Let the customer uh, talk about why they think the contract is flawed and really listen to them. And when they do, I want you to listen to it from their perspective, right? If they're asking like, hey, I really would like to work from home and here's why. And the reason why is because, you know, I need to, uh, you know, take care of my elderly parents and uh, they're getting on in years and it would be really wonderful if I could work from home. And so I think understanding that, right? And then asking questions behind that. Okay, please explain that to me. What does that mean? Are they living with you now? Well, no, no. 
but they might be living with me or they actually don't live with me, but I need to go there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. So what you're really saying is on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you need some flexibility. Yeah. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to work from home, right? Or maybe they do need to work from home. But like I said, really understanding what the request is, what the idea is. Let's say they have a great new idea for um, a, a product within your company and they sit down and they did all this work and they're very excited about it and they bring you the idea of the product like really understanding like asking questions like great well what's the opportunity of this product this is a cool product um cool cool idea but how much money do you think we can make on this how much do you think we can sell what do you think the costs are and really flushing out everything asking questions before you say yes before you say no to really get in and understand what that particular request or suggestion is i think as that you unfold you might determine that, hey, the answer isn't yes or no. The answer is some modification or the answer could be, we need to continue to talk about this. But let's say that the answer, the question is, hey, I really like to work from home. And you find out through, you know, asking questions that has to do with the fact that they have elderly parents and they want to be able to take care of them and they need some flexibilities on, you know, throughout the week. <clears throat> but you find out that on Fridays, there's a nurse there. And so what you could do is say, you know what? The answer is yes, but with some expectations, right? Yes, you know, because you're going to be working from home, we're going to require a couple more reports out of you. Are you comfortable with that? You know, yes, you're going to be working from home, but on Fridays, we need you to come in for a meeting and we're going to adjust our meeting schedule, but we need you there every Friday at the office. The answer is yes, but hey, it's going to cost us more because we need to put, you know, some uh, cabling into your system. We get, need to get you a new system so you can work from home. So, hey, this is going to be in lieu of a raise this year because, you know, we're having to make some adjustments, right? And really understanding and then asking them, hey, are you comfortable with these type of modifications? And so the answer is yes, but the answer is yes with expectations. The answer is yes with some strings attached, right? If the answer is no, for whatever reason, I think it's very important that you explain to them, listen, first off, I heard you. I understand what you're saying. And I empathize with you because it's very important to empathize. Like, Hey, I understand that this would be great if you were to be able to work from home, but I want you to understand, but we can't do that today or we can't do that, that ever. But I want you to understand why? And it's not that I don't value you. It's not that I don't care about your elderly parents. It's not that I don't think your idea for a new product is good, but here's why we can't do this. The new product is a great idea. It's super cool, but we've done something very similar in the past and it took us half a million dollars in investment just to be able to try that. And I love your idea. I love your creativity. I see so much value with what you presented here. So I want you to continue to bring ideas to me. But the answer for this one is we're not going to do it. Um, maybe at some point we will. And if we do, I want to involve you again. But right now, I think it's a neat idea, but it won't work for us today. And here's why. For the person who wants to work at home to be able to explain, listen, I understand why you're asking me this. I understand why it's very important to you. But here's why that won't work for our company company because the two people that you work so closely with, they can't work from home. They're, they're here and it will not work if you're at home and they're here. And that's why this relationship won't work. It's not that I don't want to allow something. It's not that I'm just saying no to say no. I want you to understand the logic behind it. It doesn't mean that everyone's always going to agree with you, but they're going to understand you and they're going to know that you're someone who listens and you empathize and you're not just making knee jerk dictatorial or dictator type uh, reactions and saying no to everybody. Like you don't want to be known as a fascist, right? And so there, like I said, there can also be times when you say yes. And like I, my mom said, listen, you just need to get comfortable with hearing the word no, but sometimes the answer is going to be yes. And that's great. But I think when the answer is yes, we also need to be put very clear expectations around things like, you know what? The answer is yes, I am going to give you a raise and here's why. It's not just because you asked for, although, you know, good for you for asking, I'm proud of you, but here's why the answer is yes, because you're going to get a new title. But with that, 
with that answer being yes, there's also new expectations, right? So, hey, we're going to expect you to manage two more people or, hey, the answer is yes, but hey, we need to win this project. And if we don't win this project six months from now, things might change. And I think being able to give very clear answers of yes and very, I'm sorry, very clear answers of no and also very clear answers of yes. And if there's a yes, if there's some strings attached to that, being clear about that from the very beginning will really help you. If a customer says to you, hey, I'd really love to modify my contract. You know, we can no longer commit to $20,000 a month and here's why. And you listen to them and you decide that, hey, you know what? I'm actually going to let them modify their contract. And they modify the contract. You also need to be able to say very clearly, hey, listen, the answer is yes, but I want you to know that we need to modify these other points as well, right? That, you know, the security uh, deposit is going to have to go up and here's why. And again, explaining the why behind everything is so important because whether it's a customer you don't want just customers. You want people that you partner together on their business. Whether it's an employee, you don't want just people that work for you. We, you want people that work with you. You know, whether it's your children at home, you don't want kids that just think that you're, you know, this fascist dictator. You want people that know that you're their daddy and that you love them and that the answer why they're not allowed to stay out all night on prom isn't because the answer is no and I said no. The answer is no because I love you. I do trust you. I, I trust your girlfriend. I trust you. I think you guys are wonderful, but I'm trying to protect you because that's the craziest night of the year and there are people that get hurt on the roads and so therefore I want you home by two o'clock. And so when we can explain the why behind and when we can explain the strings and attached and, and you're a very good open communicator, you don't end up with uh, customers. You end up with people that you're partnered together on their company. You don't end up with employees that work for you. You, empl you have people that work with you. You don't end up with kids that think you're a dictator. You end up with a family. And these are important. So yes, and no are both equally challenging. And how you deliver those yeses, how you deliver those nos will determine the types of relationships you have both professionally and personally. I'm Devin. This is a whiteboard entrepreneur. And if you apply these principles to, to your life today, I know it's going to help.